a lot of people are hyped for the sequel of Zelda Breath of the Wild, but unfortunately those people still have to wait a while before that game gets released. So what do you do to keep the hype train going? That's right, you make a spin-off game. And what better genre to pick than the warrior genre, as asset flipping and cheap easy game design are the keywords for that genre. <laughs> but no, really, I was actually very hyped for Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity. Probably one of the very few as I've seen a decent amount of people not liking the idea that even resources were spent on this game. Which I find to be an understandable approach. As I demonstrated just now, Warriors games hold a certain stigma that usually involves a very grindy, bland experience that is not for everybody. In the first Hyrule Warriors game, this was definitely the case, but I still really liked that game. It was just one big love letter that played on the nostalgia of the series, but it did so in a very good manner. And its archaic design made it very easy to access and a fun co-op game as well. There is nothing wrong with this approach, but it was good to see that for the next Hyrule Warriors game, they decided to focus more on other aspects than just references. Though this game got big shoes to fill, as this game is a prequel to Zelda Breath of the Wild. This puts the game in a rather difficult spot, as people expect a certain degree of quality, as it's a Zelda game, but its connection to Breath of the Wild gives this game a lot of flack for telling a story we already know the end of it. So how did Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity do in this difficult spot? Did they make a worthy prequel to Breath of the Wild, or is it just a lazy asset flip of a Warriors game that will get boring in one hour? Well, let's find out. In Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity, we travel back a hundred years in time to witness the Great Calamity unfold. A war between the armies of Hyrule and the forces of Calamity Ganon. We follow Zelda and Link in a race against time to assemble the champions of Hyrule and to unite the people to stand together. And that's it. Short, simple, but to the point, and it's a very soothing story premise for a Warriors game. I also really like these kind of prequels as we know the results of these events, but finally get a chance to fully explore them. And while we do know the outcomes of these events, it still can hold some surprises. If you played other Zelda games before, then a lot of things will be familiar to you in this game. And if you have played Breath of the Wild, you probably would think you are watching a modded version of that game. That's because Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity heavily leans on Breath of the Wild. Which is logical, because it's a prequel and would actually be weird if it wasn't. However, it leans so heavily on it that its identity is literally Breath of the Wild, but Dynasty Warriors. It is a complete asset flip, but it feels so bad saying that. The term is mostly associated with bad lazy game design, and while Omega Force or, well, Koei Tecmo are no strangers when it comes to bad asset flipping in Warriors games, it's not the case here. In matter of fact, it's quite the opposite, as Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity proves that the Warriors genre still has untapped potential and that asset flipping can be a good thing. Which brings me to the combat, as that is the element that supports the claim I just made. It plays the key role in this game as 95% of this game consists of fighting. At its core, the combat is a hack and slash with the famous two-button combo system. To, to press the, the same button like X, 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 and Y, 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 and X, X, and Y, Y, Y again, you'll be sucked. But here, you won't be sucked, as in Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity, the combat is mixed with the elements and abilities from Breath of the Wild. While the combos do consist of a combination of only two buttons, they made sure that every character has their own combos. This added a lot of variety to a rather boring system, especially the connection combos can have with the special move of every character. And even then, some characters' combos use this connection more than others, creating even more variety in the way their combos work. In the other Hyrule Warriors game, every character played more or less the same. The biggest difference between them all were their fighting animations, but in Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity, they avoided this problem and actually made it very exciting to constantly play different characters. It's not only fun, but it makes the grind in this game undurable, as you constantly switch between playstyles. On top of that, you got the elements and ability systems from Breath of the Wild. While they don't have as much of an impact as in Breath of the Wild, they do offer more variation in the combat though they are meant to be used specifically against elite monsters and bosses. 
Fighting elite monsters and bosses is slightly more difficult than fighting against normal monsters. You have to pay attention to parry or dodge their attacks. Dodging be the most safest option and if your timing is on point you get an opening to attack the enemy. Time slows down and you get to damage their weak point gauge. Once that gauge is empty you get a button prompt to perform a weak point smash which does extra damage. Another way to damage their weak point gauge is by attacking their weak spot or to parry them with abilities. Before an elite monster or boss attacks, it has to charge up their attacks. In these couple of seconds you get a visual cue that tells you which ability you need to use to parry them. If you successfully use the correct ability, it stuns the enemy and you get a couple of seconds to attack its weak point gauge. The final way to damage an enemy's weak point gauge is to use an element rod on them that they are weak against. Some of these elite monsters or bosses have a main element and if you use the opposite element against them, you get a big time gap to attack their weak point gauge. Though all these abilities can be used at any moment at any time. It's just a kind of a waste to use them on normal monsters as in true Dynasty Warriors fashion you slice through them like butter. The character roster is a lot smaller in this Hyrule Warriors game, yet the characters here are more detailed and different from one another. Every character has their own gimmick and style of combo and even the Breath of the Wild abilities are different for each character. There are of course characters I really liked playing and some I didn't, but I gladly played as those characters as well, because that would bring some good but needed variation in my experience. Though constantly playing the same character is not getting boring quickly either. While the story battles are very simple and straightforward, it are the many optional battles that also bring in a good degree of variation in fighting. The original approach of how Dynasty Warriors battles should go is left behind. Most battles you do are objective based rather than capturing countless of zones on a map. These objectives can be something simple as to kill a certain enemy or an X amount of them. But there are also gimmick objectives like escort missions that don't suck and one of my favorite the Divine Beast missions. They were just semi rail shooters but they really changed the gameplay from time to time and it was just a lot of fun. You easily kill over a thousand monsters in one single hit and the environment reacts to all that damage that you cause and overall it really shows how strong these divine beasts are. One weird thing though is that the game has a sort of motion setting for these missions and it says that it should work in every mode of the switch but personally I found it only to be working fine in the handheld mode. Speaking of working the game does have performance issues from time to time. When there are a lot of effects going on at the same time or when you play in co-op, you easily run into these performance issues. Now, I don't mind them as they are not game breaking but just very short frame drops now and then. But I know some people care for that stuff. I gotta mention that the game is a very good all round Switch game. I do prefer playing in docking mode but I had no problem playing Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity on the go. The co-op has been improved a lot and is more user friendly than in the other Hyrule Warriors game. The only downside is, is that the co-op here is not as easy to jump in. There are definitely more mechanics into play and as every character has its own working, it might take your co-op partner a bit longer to get into it. The biggest issue this game has is the lack of customization for the characters and the endgame. In the previous Hyrule Warriors game there was a huge amount of endgame where you could unlock a lot of skins for all the characters. Collecting them all is a huge grind and I never completed that, but it still offered a lot of things for the end game. In Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity there is customization for the characters, but it's mostly for Link. I would have liked to customize the other characters as well in the same way you can do with Link, but I guess Nintendo wants some space to sell skin DLCs. This also counts for weapons, as Link has multiple types of weapons, where other characters only have one type of weapon. I know Link is the hero of this anime, but I enjoyed playing the other characters more. In the previous Hyrule Warriors game, Link also had the most options, but all the other characters came with a decent amount of skins as well. Though it's pretty funny to dress Link up weirdly for the cutscenes, even though that breaks immersion right away. I also would have liked to see more character interaction. During the story there are moments here and there where they interact with each other, but there are many missed opportunities to do this more. When you set out on missions, you see the selected characters for that mission interact with each other just a little bit. They jump off the tower together and glide to the mission location. It would have been fun to have a short dialogue interaction in there as well. It doesn't need to be anything special, but a fun comment would have been nice and create more of a connection between the characters. 
Another moment would be at the end of a battle when you get a victory screen. In the previous Hyrule Warriors game this moment was used to make a reference to the other Zelda games. In Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity this moment could have been used for more character interaction. Having them comment on the battle or just a small goofy moment with each other would have been nice. It's a missed chance to develop these characters further by these small means. But honestly, I don't have any big complaints about this game. It's a fine game, it's simple and nothing special overall, but for a Warriors game, it's excellent. The story is alright that mostly given away at the start of the game, as this is a prequel. The combat is definitely the best part of the game as it's fun, fast and has a lot of variation, making the grindy nature of a Warriors game endurable. And the overall look and presentation is fantastic. And while the console does sometimes struggle with performance, it's not bad and won't ruin your experience. It will not replace the first Hyrule Warriors game as one of my to-go co-op games. While there is a lot of content in this game as well, there is just not as much as in the first one. And it's also not as easy to get into. Still, I think it's great what they did with this game, making a good but simple prequel to another game by using that game's assets. This game also shows that the warrior genre still has new possibilities and that Tecmo Koei still can improve this series in general. If they will do this however is another story, as with their own games there's no major company like Nintendo hovering above them and double checking everything they do. Nonetheless, Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity is a really fun game, and as a Zelda fan it's worth your time and money. If you are a Warriors fan this game will be right up your alley. Even though it might be less grindy than your average Warriors game, it's still a lot of fun and something different. I definitely enjoyed my time with it and probably will continue enjoying my time with it in the future. And that concludes my review of Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity. I hope it was useful to you. If you already played this game, see this review as a discussion starter. You might agree or disagree with me and I would love to hear your thoughts on the game down below. Thank you very much for watching. If you liked this video, leave a like and consider subscribing. And with that all being said, I wish you a good day and until next time.